What is up guys, Ninja Nick back with another round of the Japan Champions League. We have Lugia on the left versus Gardevoir on the right. Both of these players looking like they're 2-0. Of course, you see these sub feature matches. They put these on whenever there's a little bit of dead air during the tournament. They do record multiple matches simultaneously. So some of these do not actually happen live. They just put up on the live stream uh, kind of between rounds when they're still trying to like pair and stuff. So I do like that they do that. It looks like the Lugia's turn is just attach pass. Uh, not the worst start from a Lugia deck just because of course you can always just, you know, ultra ball away two Archeops to grab an Arceus, uh, Arche uh, Lugia V-Star in order to uh, just get an attack off on the second turn. So we will just have to see exactly how strong this player's hand is. Of course, we do have the um, lovely uh it's not bolt yamper we have the lovely yamper butt sleeves uh, we do have a lugia v-star in hand as lo long with a lugia uh, you don't need to bench that lugia turn one against gardevoir specifically if you were playing against something like maybe maridon or another or maybe mew a deck that could attack for a big damage turn one knocking out your lugia you definitely would have wanted to bench the second Lugia may be attached to that one instead for the turn. Although I guess it's the jet energy, so it would force itself active either way. Um, here is the Iono that is going to shuffle that hand to the bottom of the deck. Maybe we'll get a better hand off of this. Not too much going on. No way to get the Archeops in the discard pile for the most part there. So um, still not quite seeing it. I see a pump kaboo, but that's about it. Just some supporters. We got to research. Maybe we can just draw a little bit deeper. Hope to find a uh, double Archeops Ultra Ball would be pretty great off of the research. But that is uh, a couple of supporters you'll be discarding with the research if you do go for that. So we do see the Luminion is able to find that uh, INO and also gets a Forest Seal Stone to it. Uh, Luminion being a pretty great option to have in the Gardevoir decks if you just need that little bit of added consistency. It also is an uh, additional option for use with the um, Forest Seal Stone. So you don't have to necessarily put down a Zacian at times where you don't want it. And you can always collapse the Luminion away afterwards as well. And it looks like we are going to use the Teleportation Burst of the Ralts to do 10 whole damage. Um... Sometimes I find that it's just better to retreat the Ralts, putting that energy in the discard pile. Because had you done that, you could have used Mew's Mysterious Tail, maybe found a rare candy off the top of your deck. So that then you could rare candy into Gardevoir EX on the next turn. I always think actually attacking with the Teleportation Burst is incorrect. Um, the only time it's ever ended up mattering for me is I Teleportation Bursted twice against a Tyranitar. Uh, to put it at 210 remaining and then i knocked it out from there with a zashian uh, and we were both bricking really hard so uh, in all honesty it should not have mattered uh, but it did in that particular game i think that if you just want to play the full art waltzes they're fine i think one of the 60 hp waltz is still good in case you go against something like arceus where you can just kind of lock them out of the game sometimes by using the mirage or the um memory skip Especially if you go against something like the Alolan Vulpix V-Star I did talk about in a previous round. It is still a great way to uh, play around that as well. Because you can lock them out of using their attack for a turn. So force them to finding like a switch and retreat in order to reset that effect that's applied to them. So we are going to burn at here. That's going to put two Archeops into the discard pile. Two of two cards from your deck to the discard pile with Burnett. And then immediately evolve into the Arceus V-Star, uh, being able to... Or the, sorry, the Lugia V-Star. I keep saying Arceus for some reason for this one. Uh, Lugia V-Star to grab the two Archeops out of the discard pile. And now we can use both of their Primal Turbo abilities to search the deck for two special energy cards and attach them to one of the Pokemon that you have in play. A little bit unfortunate that it's not any energy card because it would be really nice to play like one water energy, like basic water energy for use with the Luminion so that you can Aqua return with it because it was a really great play in previous formats when you go against something like Lost Box or even Gardevoir here if you were able to just 
shuffle that Luminian back into the deck and take a knockout uh, pretty easily, but unfortunately that is not something that you can do anymore. There are no special water energies. The only special rainbow energy we have shuts itself off if it's attached to a Pokemon that has other special energies on it. Uh, so it just becomes colorless if it's in that deck. Although I think that that card would actually work in Lugia if you're playing uh, Radiant Charizard as your Radiant instead because you could just accelerate that to the Charizard to be used as your fire energy. Uh, would not be that bad, but it does only work late game, so... Uh, I prefer the Radiant Serena, it works a lot better. And we are just going to load up this Lugia, even gets the reversal energy on it that does count as one colorless energy when it's attached to a uh, Pokemon that is not a single prize uh, evolution Pokemon. It has to specifically be attached to an evolution Pokemon without a rule box when you're behind on prizes in order to be three rainbow energy. Otherwise, it's one colorless. So, putting it on the Lugia here, not too bad. Uh, this deck is probably playing the uh, Luxray, uh, the stage two that you can put immediately down onto your bench if you are behind on prize cards. Uh, it's a really great option for the Lugia Mirror match. Uh, because then you could always just bench the Luxray, the Stage 2 Luxray from your hand since you're losing. Uh, accelerate the rain, uh, the that triple rainbow in the Reversal Energy to it with your Archeops. And then one-shot the opposing Lugia V-Star uh, due to weakness. So a lot of the players in Japan do like that. I think it's better to just not play it at all, honesty, honestly. Uh, maybe if you're playing like the colorless version of Lugia, it's fine. But if you're playing the single strike version, I don't really feel like there's enough room in the deck. And I think the single strike version, while it is a little bit less consistent, it has so much more power behind it that it's actually just worth taking that consistency cut. And oh my god, we just evolve into Curlia, Rare Candy, into Shining Arcana Gardevoir, and then Research. That is a pretty big turn there uh, from this player. Um, even two more Rare Candy in hand, but do we have another Gardevoir? I don't think so. I think there is an Ultra Ball there, I think so. You could always just go for the Shining Arcana and then go for the uh, Refinement with the Curlia as well. Looks like we do get one Psychic Energy off of that. Shining Arcana is pretty great. We are going to get rid of a Battle VIP Pass to draw two more. And now if we have a Ultra Ball, we can Ultra Ball for the, rare, with, for the Gardevoir EX. Uh, rare Candy, the active into it, and then retreat and be able to attack with... Maybe our Shining Arcana Gardevoir would not be too bad. It will just be softening up this Lugia. We do not have the energy to do uh, too much damage here yet, but um, softening it up is better than nothing. You could always just attack with the Gardevoir EX as well, uh, do 190 damage. Uh, but if your opponent is playing the Single Strike version and you just haven't seen a Single Strike energy yet, you could be putting yourself at a major risk. Looks like we are going to Rare Candy the bench, so we are just going to retreat for one in. Oh, here we go. We have the Cresselia, so this is actually the best play here. We're going to go for the Moon Glow Reverse this turn, being able to put two, three energies onto our Pokemon in play from the discard pile. So one, that's a retreat from there. And oh, actually, since we are losing, the Reversal Energy is activated. We can actually take a knockout on this with the... Shining Arcana Gardevoir's Brainwave Attack. So we do have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven energy cards on it times three is 210 plus 60 is 270 plus the 10 that was already on it from the uh, teleportation burst. Okay, I guess I was incorrect. The teleportation burst mattered. Yeah, that teleportation burst actually did matter. So I take back everything I've said about that teleportation burst. It is the optimal Ralts to play three of in the deck. <laughs> Specifically because of that. So, looks like this is colorless because we see a bench of double Snorlax here. So the colorless Lugia deck usually does play Weirdier. So that uh, during the late game, if you have a bunch of energy in play, you could bench the Weirdier 
uh, retreat into it or use the jet energy to put it active. And then when it becomes active, you can move as many energy cards from your board to it as possible. And then it does damage based on the amount of energy on itself. Looks like we are going to get rid of the Mesa Gosa, opting to keep that collapse stadium in play. Maybe trying to continue limiting the Gardevoir's bench is the best play here. And here we go. We are going to use the Archeops Primal Turbo. We'll be able to search the deck for two colorless energy cards. We no longer have access to twin energy that was gone in the previous rotation. Uh, quite a few months back now, maybe six months, seven, eight months ago. We do have therapy energy in the deck as well. So therapy energy is really powerful in that the Snorlax does put itself to sleep with its attack. Uh, if it does do its attack, uh, it, it puts itself to sleep and then you have to flip two coins for sleep. So you have to flip double heads in order for it to wake up instead of just flip one coin and it be heads. So it makes it go down from a 50% 50 50 chance to wake up to a 25% uh, chance to wake up. So uh, having the odds there but the therapy energy makes sure you cannot have a special condition on your pokemon so the snorlax is immune to sleep because of therapy energy we also see the jet energy be attached and just like in the giratina decks uh, by attaching that to the bench pokemon it does force it to become active and now we are able to use uh was it thumping snore i think is the attack name uh, to take the knockout here on the gardevoir and uh continue uh, keeping pace here with the Gardevoir deck in prizes. Uh, that Cresselia will not be able to do quite enough damage here in this matchup right now just because, you know, it's really just good against Lost Box decks where you can uh, move damage counters to like an 80 HP or less Pokemon. Uh, and all of these Pokemon have 150 HP in play right now and they're all single prizers. So we are going to be able to keep pace in the prize trade and maybe just at the end of the game knock out a Gardevoir EX to go ahead in prizes. So that's probably the game plan from this Lugia Archeops player. But will it be enough? Uh, this Gardevoir deck could just whiff Gardevoir as well. We did just see them uh, super rod in a bunch of Gardevoir pieces. We are going to use refinement getting rid of an ear uh, Iono. We're going to use Refinement again, getting rid of a Curlia, or sorry, a Manaphy. Manaphy does not matter in this matchup. Your opponent is not doing any sort of bench damage. And we are now going to level ball for a Ralts. Looks like that is a promo level ball. Must be from some sort of maybe gym championships or Champions League. I'm not quite sure, but there is a nice stamp on that. So that will get the Ralts out of the deck, which will be benched. And now what do we do here? Uh, looks like we're going to go boss's orders on an Archeops. I like this play. So uh, the Snorlax is going to keep its energy on it. But by picking off the Archeops, that does limit the ability of the Lugia deck to be able to get those energies into play later in the game. So uh, as long as we can pick off both the Archeops, then we can just win off of knocking out both the Snorlax. And we will be able to potentially win before they can stack up some sort of big attacker to knock out the Gardevoir EX. So this is uh, definitely fantastic. We are going to have to attack with the Gardevoir EX here though. In order to take this knockout. But taking this knockout is going to put you in such a fantastic position. So that will put 60 damage to the Gardevoir EX. But I think that's fine. It'll still be left with 250 HP remaining. Going to even attach for turn to the Curlia just for good measure, just to make sure in case that evolves into the Shining Arcana Gardevoir, it will increase its effectiveness of Brainwave. That's one less energy you have to get out of the discard pile in order to attack with it. So that's 20 less damage counters, you ha or 20 less damage that you have to put on the Pokemon with Psychic Embrace. And it's really bothering me that this one damage counter is still out in play. Like, just clean that up, please. <laughs> I 
So it looks like we are going to promote the Snorlax. I think that's correct. That is your main attacker right now. Uh, you can use the Archaeops to charge itself up and then attach an energy to the other Snorlax. And then you have three attackers left for the rest of the game. Uh, it doesn't necessarily matter if your opponent bosses up the Archaeops or not, but I don't think you can take four prize cards with all of this. Looks like we are going to Great Ball. Look at the top seven cards of our deck. Choose a Pokemon we find there to put into the hand. So we're going to reveal that Luminion that we found off of that. And now we are going to uh, be able to use its ability to find a supporter card from deck if we do choose to bench that. So uh, will we be doing that this turn? Is it is there another Pokemon that we want to find? Maybe a Lugia V to become a Lugia V star? I don't know, but we might want to put a weird ear into play just to start stacking damage counters on it because we kind of just lose to boss's orders again anyway. So might as well just put the weird ear in play, start charging it up with the Archeops Arche so that then if the opponent, the opponent can just win maybe a turn earlier by bossing up the weird ear instead of just bossing up the Archeops and making it so that the weird ear is never an option in the future. I guess the other thing that we could do is just like uh, hit into the Gardevoir EX and Iono, but I don't think that that's relevant either. And it looks like we are going to Capturing Aroma for a uh, Drapion here. So the Drapion actually, uh, that can one-shot this Gardevoir EX. Uh, you can accelerate four energy cards to it. Uh, in order to do 190 damage, if you have two double turbos on it, that's minus 40. So that's still 150, which times two for weakness is still 300. That would be enough. But do you have two double turbo energies left? I mean, you would have to, right? You're playing the colorless Lugia variation. Uh, now you're just hoping that your opponent is not able to find another Gardevoir EX. Uh, and no, it looks like we're going to go for the knockout on the Curlia instead. That's not a terrible idea. Uh, we are going to put a gift energy on the Drapion too. So if the opponent does boss it up and knock it out, we do draw a fresh hand, a uh, drawing until we have seven cards in hand. I think they only have like maybe four or five right now. So those couple of energies could end up mattering. So I think this turn you do want to knock out that Drapion if you can find a boss's orders. And it will be a little bit harder to find that boss's orders with one less refinement Curlia in play. But I think if you're the Lugia player, I think on this next turn you do have to go Drapion. And just go down to one prize card remaining and just hope that maybe you're... God, I don't know. Because it's like, do you remove the Gardevoir EX from play? Or do you just try to boss up another Curlia next turn and hit it with another Snorlax? And do you have the energies left to be able to do that? And does your opponent just have a boss for maybe the Archaeops? That would still be fine too. Boss up the Archaeops, knock it out. That should give you the time that you need in order to just win the game. You're still ahead on one prize card. And the Drapion is not likely going to be powered up by just single heart attaches. Uh, Shining Arcana coming out here too. I think, is that a Curlio we found? Yes, it is. So we are going to be able to draw another two cards if we want. We do find that boss's orders. Getting rid of the reversal energy here. I guess we don't necessarily need it. We are even on prize cards, so it doesn't even work anyway. So that would make sense. So yeah, what do you do? Do you boss's orders? And if you boss, which do you bring up? Do you bring up the Drapion, take the two prizes, allow your opponent to draw a couple of cards? Or do you boss up the Archaeops and prevent the Drapion from potentially being a factor on this next turn? Uh, if you have Palpad access, it would make it really easy because then you could just boss again. Uh, you could always Super Odd Luminion back into the deck to be able to find boss as well. Yeah, I guess it's really just what do you want to do? Which is the correct play in your opinion? And it looks like we are going to go boss the Drapion. I think that that is correct. I think that's the most threatening thing on the board. Your opponent can always respond with knocking out the Shining Arcana Gardevoir that you're attacking with. But then you still have the Gardevoir EX in play to be able to respond to take the final KO. 
And actually, no, we're going to go with the Zacian instead. Um, so I guess that does leave the Shining Arcana Gardevoir in play. Your opponent would take two prize cards going down to one remaining. Um, but that's fine because if you do get Ionode or something, or if you are looking for a specific card, uh, you still have the Shining Arcana in play on the next turn to be able to have two more draws to potentially get there. And I, I do really like that play. I think going for the Zacian here is actually correct. Uh, just because, again, it does allow Shining Arcana to stay in play next turn just to draw another two cards with it. And if they want to, like, boss around it, you still have all of the energy on the Zacian and can just take the game with that as well. So, going to draw a couple of cards maybe with that Gift Energy. Probably just promote the Snorlax to take the knockout on the Zacian and then... The Gardevoir EX comes up and wins the game. You also saw that the there was one energy uh, put onto the Gardevoir EX from the discard pile. And that the reason for that is because if the Lugia deck does play Path to the Peak, uh, he could always just play Path, knock out the Zacian. And then if there wasn't two energy on the Gardevoir EX, there would not be the potential for an attack. So as long as you have an energy card to attach from hand... Uh, on this next turn, this Gardevoir EX can still attack. And there's no way that you can... I guess I guess you the punish would be like Path Iono, but you still have Refinement and Shining Arcana to try to find that one energy. You should know whether or not you still have energy in your deck at this point. And I don't remember if I've even seen a Fog Crystal from them, so they could always just have a couple of Fog Crystals left in deck to help find those Psychic Energies. So this is definitely the correct board state, and this has uh, effectively created what I call one of those checkmate board states, uh, where, you know, you're doomed if you knock out the Zacian, you're doomed if you knock out the Shining Arcana, you're doomed if you knock out the Gardevoir EX. Uh, those are uh, all the threats. Uh, pretty much the entire board is threats from this player on the right, and there is no correct thing to knock out just because you have three prize cards remaining. And I think he just told his opponent to hurry up because he is just sitting there not doing anything. Uh, and uh, slow play is a bit of an issue because they do have only two and a half minutes left. And if this game were to tie, uh, it is a game loss for both players in, Jap in Japan there. So uh, just going to use the Psychic Embrace to put uh, two more damage counters on itself, one more energy, and then take the knockout on the Snorlax and uh, win by one prize card. So a very close game, surprisingly, but uh, definitely uh, felt like it was in control by the Gardevoir deck the entire time. As always, guys, do not forget to comment, like, and subscribe. It's really important for that YouTube algorithm. And we will see you guys next time for another round. And I'm thinking that maybe they learned their lesson and didn't put Chen Pao back on because uh, that, that was crazy earlier.